Welcome to the Class of the Little Sass podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Millspaw, best-selling author and award-winning motivational speaker with over 20 years in the personal development industry. I believe that the more you know, the more you grow. With each podcast episode, I will educate and empower you, girlfriend to girlfriend style, on how to create a happy life from motherhood guidance, career and business advice, to feeling confident in your relationships and everything in between. This is Real Talk Radio. Let's jump right into today's episode. Hello, girlfriends. How are you today? Today's episode is a good one. It's if you need more energy, in fact, I'm lacking energy and I want to really get deep into what that means so that you can flip the switch and embrace your life and business, career, whatever that looks like with more enthusiasm. So let me start off with some stories of myself here. I have a teenage daughter and at some point I thought, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe I've just seen it all, you know, like I'm older. Maybe nothing excites me anymore. Maybe it's not lack of energy. Maybe it's a lack of excitement. You know, all the E words, enthusiasm, excitement, energy. Carrie, what is this all about? Well, my dear friends, there's reasons why we kind of shrug our shoulders. you like, meh, I could do that or I could not do that. And I think it sort of hit for me after COVID, of course, um, but I was already facing a burnout in my business at the time. And this is, you know, something I talk about a lot, but it applies everywhere in life. It's not just your business. It's anywhere that you've just seen the same thing over and over and over again. And it's not lack of energy. It's lack of enthusiasm. That's how I see it. I've lived in Las Vegas for over 15 years now. When someone comes to town that's brand new to Vegas, their enthusiasm for the strip and the casinos and the shows and all the lights is going to be a lot more exciting and way over the top than mine. I've seen it all. I've already seen it, already been there, done that. And in fact, it doesn't do anything for me when someone wants to meet up at the strip or head at a casino, even though it's a gorgeous property. It's still, I'm going to sigh every time. Like, oh, do I have to go down there to see my friends? Oh, please don't make me go down there. And it's just because I've seen it all. Been there, done that. Checked it off so many times that, you know, it's like the check can't be checked no more, guys. In fact, the first couple of years that I moved here in 2008, 2009, I really overdid it. I actually worked down there. So, you know, sometimes your lack of energy is really lack of enthusiasm right? Lack of excitement. Where else in your life? You know, I thought, well, gosh, maybe I'm just getting old, you know, but no, I think if I wanted to go see something new, like head over to a new city and, you know, I always have more excitement to go sightsee in my neighbor state of California than I do here because I feel like I've already seen it all, you know, and I feel bad for people that do visit here and want to hang out that I'm not more of a fun partner to hang out with at the time or (laughs) don't make the, um, I can't quite match their energy. I just can't. And when you have kids, you probably feel that way too. They're so excited just to go to the park, depending on their age, of course, or go to their favorite store or go to grandma's house. And you're thinking, oh, here we go. Got to pack up the car and load everything up. And, you know, they're so excited because we're going to do a trip, maybe go to amusement park, Disneyland, whatever. Right. So is it, is it, we're just getting old or is there more to it than that? Let me circle back a little bit, like getting slightly burned out. No, I was burned out with my business. If I had to hear about one more event or promote one more client or as much as I love authors and I want to get their word out, because that's what I've done for years was promote other people's businesses, their brand, build their personal brand, promote it out. And get them the, you know, that energy and attention that they need on their business. And at the time I loved doing it. I would get them speaking gigs. I would help them get best-selling author on their books. I'd help them publish their books. 
Now, authors and business owners were my gig. But after a while, and I think COVID kind of knocked me sideways with, we're going to cancel all events. And I couldn't quite help my clients like I had planned. Events were being canceled right and left. It wasn't the same. I was promoting keynote speakers and the wind just left my sails. And I don't know if it was a combination of that, trying to keep things afloat, or if I was just tired. You know, and I think we need to take a look at that, take inventory of your life. What's going on? Where in my life are certain activities a faucet that fill you, or where are they a drain? that empty you. So I'm going to use those terminologies throughout this episode. What's a faucet? What's a drain? And you get to just kind of go and take inventory of your own list, write a D next to it for drain, F for faucet. So what fills you? F could be fulfilling you too. And just kind of keep going through that, my friends, because I don't think it's just age. I don't think it's just, I've already seen that a hundred times because I can go to the strip today And if it's something interesting that I personally would like to see or do, and it's with the right company, my ender is going to be different than, I don't even want to meet with this person. I don't even know what to say. I haven't seen them in like 10 years. It's awkward. Or maybe they're taking me to a part of the strip that I'm uncomfortable being at as an empath. That stuff matters. Energy, you know, all of these tips I'm going to give you and give you, help you work you through this energy inventory isn't just for empaths. It applies to everyone, but it's going to always kind of pivot a little bit and be a little highlighted, so to speak, to help the empath community. Cause that's what I do. You know, it's a lot of what my books are about, my blogs and so on. So let's take some inventory. Why are we lacking enthusiasm? Why is it in business or life that you're just like, meh, heard it already a million times, don't care. Where is it in your life? Is it, is your job going stagnant? You know, whatever career choice you have, how can you bring some life to it? Get some enthusiasm around it because that's what it's really about. It's not always physical energy. It can be, it can be. Sometimes it's not just a health related thing. I know when I'm working on something that lights me up, I don't look at the clock. I barely eat that day. I don't even get up to the bathroom. As weird as that sounds. I'm just in the zone and I'm excited. I can't wait to get it done. Let's do this. This is awesome. And progress does create more enthusiasm and more energy. Just seeing those baby steps and increments of productivity will do it for you. But let's be real. I mean, even going to the gym or being active in life, when you see progress, it makes you a little more excited to do it. You're like, yeah, this is working. I'm going to take another 45 minute walk. I'm noticing a difference in my body. I feel better. It's amazing how that works. So take kind of inventory there too. So let's kind of go in, take a deep dive of what is actually draining my energy. Get clear on that so we can eliminate the drains, y'all. Plug that drain. And where are we filling? Where are we finding faucets, little faucets of happiness, joy, enthusiasm, excitement into our lives? And I'm the, you know, the queen of it where someone will come to me so excited about something and I'm like, do we have to? Oh, you know, and I don't want to be that girl. I want to see life more interesting, exciting and fun. I've always been known as fun girl in the positive carry sunshine. And there's some days it's just not. It's just not. And you know what? Here's your permission ticket to take a nap. Some days you just need to take a power nap. Am I right? In fact, not going to lie, just woke up from one. So I'm the queen of that. Sometimes that's what gets me out of bed. Let's just be real. There's some, I have a little conversation with my bed. Everybody that knows me knows I'm not a morning person. I'm never going to be a morning person. Just love it or leave it. (laughs) Miss Carrie was not born for the morning. I've tried everything, going to bed earlier, all the things, and I just don't love the mornings. So I have a conversation with my bed when I'm making it like, don't worry, I'm coming back. I will, as I fluff the pillows, I'm going to have a nap or right after this really ridiculously early ass meeting, I'm coming back to you. I have some crazy meetings, like 7am kind of meetings. So I give you permission to take a nap. It's good stuff, guys. Never too old, never too young. It's all good. It's one of those activities. 
Mama made me take naps as a kid and I'm taking it with me to the grave in honor of my mom. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at what's draining our energy, girls. What is it? Could it be what we're putting in our bodies? Ew, Carrie, do you have to talk about that? Yep, I do because it's important. What is draining my energy? Is it the too much caffeine, caffeine addiction? You're getting that, that dip in the caffeine or you're crashing around two, three o'clock in the afternoon and you're looking for chocolate, something to give me a boost. Where is it? Where's the kid's candy at? I know it's here somewhere. There's something sweet. You're craving that because your caffeine kick is, is literally dipping. Whatever caffeine you've drank all morning, and I'm a queen of coffee. I like to have that every morning and the caffeine's starting to wear off. That could be that. Um, sugar is going to give you those spikes, but it's not going to help you. It's not going to sustain you. That Red Bull, whatever garbage you're drinking, caffeine, whatever. Let's be real. If it's not God made, it's jar, it's jar, it's garbage, you know, and I taught wellness for a long time and I've got a nutrition certification and studied holistic wellness for years. If it's not God made, it's probably man made. And if it's man made, your body's going, what the heck are you putting in me? God created your body. God created what goes in your body. It's so black and white for me. Everything else that's like a twist or a manufactured something is going to make your body go, wait, time out. This is not the fuel I was designed for. <laughs> and you know, I'm an 80, 20 girl, 80% good, 20% bad. And I, I'm, I don't have a strict diet, but that kind of mindset helps sometimes keep me on the straight and narrow, especially when I'm noticing dips in my energy, dips in my productivity, brain power, all the things. Like, what did I eat today? Take inventory. Was it even good for me? Was it natural? What the heck did I grab? So kind of take a look at that. That's your inventory, ladies. Take a look. Where am I getting my energy drained by not having, you know, good stuff in my body? Stress will do it. Um, I started consulting from Microsoft last year when I switched, took a break from promoting my clients and doing all the promotion piece. As I mentioned before, I took on a consulting gig full time with Microsoft, working with their sales and marketing team and their leadership teams. And there was just such a crash course. There was no crash course. You just jumped in and learned how to swim in the deep end without a life preserver. That's what it felt like. Um, you were learning, you know, like they say that term drinking from a fire hose, you were learning at fast pace. There was no time to, you know, wait for Carrie to learn anything. It was just jump in. So I noticed that my energy was low because my brain was consistently on learning, learning, learning. And if you're in that learn mode all the time, your brain will take up 25% of your energy just with the thinking part. And that's just sitting at a desk. I felt like something was wrong with me. My first year in, I was like, good Lord, why am I always tired? By two o'clock, I would crash. And it was a combination of things, hormones that I'll, you know, discuss more about in future episodes at my age. And every, every female should be looking at hormones. It doesn't matter. You could have just had two babies back to back. Your hormones are going to be all over the place. You could be going through perimenopause, menopause, whatever that looks like. Hormones are an important part of how we feel as females and men too. It could be that. I think that was part of it. I had to adjust those. So take inventory. Why am I so drained? Is it my brain? Am I learning a new position at work? And it's more expected of me. So I feel like my brain, I'm on hyper-focus mode, which is that stress mode. The cortisol in your body is going crazy. What is it? Why am I so boring? Why don't I have a th enthusiasm? You know, we all want to be childlike and happy and embrace each day with that energy of, uh, you know, just great, just gratitude, clearly. So let's take another look at a different area. What else could be draining me of energy? Could be, take a look at your environment. Is your home full of clutter? This one's going to trigger a few people. Does it look like all you see everywhere around you is projects that need to be finished? That will drain you. Unfinished projects. Oh, there's the clothes I haven't folded yet from three days ago. Oh, 
still haven't put those dirty dishes away. All those pots and pans are still in the sink soaking. Good grief. I haven't got to that yet. That's draining. It's like walking around your house with a to-do list, you know, like staring you in the face. More clutter. Again, clutter, just clutter in general. I need to toss that. I need to give that to goodwill. I need to donate those things. I'm at the point now where I'm like, Carrie, you need to do some spring cleaning. Girl, it is spring and you're still not doing it. And I'm like, every time I buy something new, like shoes could be my problem, could or could not be. I'm open to having other addictions besides shoes, could be clothing. But there's something about <laughs> every time I buy a new pair of shoes, I'm like, Carrie Lynn, you've got shelves and shelves of shoes. Get rid of some, make room for new girl, you know, like get out of, you know, get rid of the old, make room for new. I'm doing the new, but I'm not getting rid of the old. So taking full disclosure and accountability for that. I'm owning it. So I have that same, oh, this doesn't make it very fun when you buy something, you feel guilty now because you're seeing all the other shoes. They're like, you haven't worn me in years. Why am I even here? So do what you can, you know, and just kind of, where can I chip away at some rooms in the house that just, you keep behind closed doors. I've got one of those. I've got a room right now where Miss Shyla's childhood furniture, bedroom furniture is still sitting and needs to be sold. And the thought of hauling that downstairs, pulling it apart, pick, taking pictures, whatever I need to do to get it out there and sold. Some family wants, would need, would love this furniture for their little girl or whomever, or even a guest room. And here I am, it's in a, a room with the door shut. And every time I open the door, I'm like, oh, this room, it's heavy. It's a heavy, heavy energy. It's draining. So take a look at your environment. If you're not happy getting in your car, it's because there's snacks everywhere, junk, McDonald's bags in the back seat. You have little kids. You're going to have goldfish that you're sitting on. I promise you, because I remember those days. Find a happy place by getting rid of the clutter. Take that time on a Saturday afternoon. Make the kids do it. I have a rule. What you brought in the car goes when you leave the car. If you brought in all this stuff, we leave with it empty. It's so simple. I'm all about the maintenance because I don't want to spend a whole afternoon working on the house. Uh, there's never a dish in my sink unless the dishwasher's physically running at that time. I like maintenance, like quick, fast systems. So I don't have to spend an afternoon cleaning. And I also, as an empath, my outside environment is super important to me. It creates that Zen vibe. If things are where they need to be, maybe it's my OCD, ADHD, all the letters that everybody wants to give you and title behind your name and a label could be that it's fine, but it's a drain. So I know it's going to drain Carrie Lynn. If she comes downstairs in the morning and sees a house that looks like a tornado hit it, she's not going to want to grab her coffee and go right back up to her office and get ready for the next meeting. She's going to want to stop and fix everything. So. At night, we do what we call a reset. You've seen this everywhere in magazines. Great suggestions online. Do a reset. Reset the house as if someone's coming over. Pillows where they go. Magazines where they go. Dishes in the sink. Dishwasher wherever. Clean it up. So when you wake up in the morning, you get to start the new day with a clean slate. I highly suggest that. It's worked great for me and I've stuck, stuck with it for years and years and years and years. So what else could be draining your energy? Who's in your inner circle? I mean, do you have any relationships with people that are pulling you down? Let's get real girls. Who's that one friend that you're like, well, we're having happy hour this Friday and I really hope they didn't invite her. She's going to be like, Man, all night long whining about her life. You know, is there any of those girls in your life or men? They're just like, oh, finally, I can dump my whole world on you. That's a drain, friend. <laughs> I am the type of girl that prefers one on one time with her friends so we can have deep conversations. I don't like the superficial group of six, seven girlfriends and everyone's smiling, no one's sharing kind of feels fake, but there's a fine line between let's meet one-on-one. -on -one. Tell me how you're doing. 
How's business? How's your family? How's your husband? Talk to me, girl. How you doing physically? Are you happy? Are you good? I love that. But then there's that one friend or that one relationship that, and I'll, I'm full disclosure. I don't have anybody like this in my life right now. Praise the Lord. I used to years ago. I don't have anybody in my life like that. I don't even have a family member like that. I'm super, super blessed. I don't know if I've just created healthier boundaries in my life as an empath. That's 100% survival. But I know those people exist because I used to have them. You see them and you're like, oh, I want to run the other way. Don't please don't please don't corner me in the room. Oh, here we go. Here comes the oh, here comes the two hour bitch session. Yay, I love this. This was a fun night. I'm so glad I left my house for this. So take a look at that. Who is in your inner circle that's just draining you? Maybe it's just their social media posts are so negative. Unfollow them. Unfriend them. Who cares? It's not personal. Or snooze them. You can snooze their posts so you don't see them at all. If you're afraid, oh my goodness, they'll freak out if I unfriend them. They'll think it's the end of the world. They'll feel abandoned. Girl, this is about your energy. It's about you. When was the last time you took time out for you? When was the last time you thought about your own personal health? Because this isn't just physical health. This is mental health. I'm talking about mental energy here. Who is literally looking at you and getting a straw because your energy is so good and they're going to suck the life out of you? Happens to me all the time. And I love people. So they're like, she loves me. I know she wants to hear about this. She's going to help me. Yeah, there's a very good chance you're right. But can I do that multiple evenings in a row? Can I do that for four hours at a time? No, of course not. What makes me a giving and caring friend? And trust me, I love my girls. Love my fam. Oh my God, do I love my family. Love my baby girl. Every night I save up the energy for when she walks in the door from either work, her boyfriends, wherever. I am her first stop. Mom, let me tell you about my day. I save that energy. I conserve it with a little box and a bow that's for Shy Lakay. Mommy energy must have that on reserve at all times for my baby. Always been there for her and I always will be there for her. Started when she was a little kid and coming home from school. First face she sees is mom. Mom, I have to tell you, it's so important for kids to have that safe space where they can let their feelings out. Be that mom, be that dad be that person for somebody. But if you didn't conserve your energy because you didn't take time out for you, you're going to be pouring from an empty cup. You're going to, you're an empty. You didn't refuel. Oh no. Now what? Now, instead of being listening and open hearted and consoling or empathetic, you're going to be bitchy, complaining, wanting to run out the door short with them saying, Hey, you're going to wrap up the story or what? I'm already done listening. You got to conserve it. So my friends, please take time out for you. And as empaths, the best way is to be alone. Our alone time is valuable. The only way you can really, really refill your cup as an empath, and this works for everybody, is to get some alone time, doing something you enjoy, doing something that feels like pampering, doing something that feels like you're filling your own cup. You know what that is you know. So that's where you fill your cup. Otherwise energy all gone. Sorry guys. I ain't got none for you. (laughs) I'm still working on filling my own self up. Y'all go fill your own self up. You know, that's kind of how you're going to feel at some point. So, so take a look at that inventory. What is draining me? Because if we can get knock out just what's draining you, you're already going to feel more enthusiasm. You're going to already feel more energetic. You're going to already have what it takes to finish that task, goal, just your stinking to-do list for the day. Am I right? And what motivates you to finish it? Sometimes you need a prize at the end, you know? I'm not above trying to act like I'm five years old. If I get a prize at the end, life is good. Like if I clean my car, can I go for ice cream after? You know, like, (laughs) or can I, if I do my tasks... I'm going to do something fun for myself after. Now, I love doing this podcast. It's one of my most favorite things ever that I've added into my world. Getting my voice out there, getting heard, helping others. 
but it's still a to-do. It's still on the to-do list. It's on my list along with a few other items for my business and personal brand. But I've already told myself, Carrie, do the podcast and you get to binge on your favorite shows tonight on Hulu. I'm a Grey's Anatomy fan. I like Station 19. My sister got me into a million little things. Love that. So I'm going to binge on that, girls, right after this. See how I'm like already thinking of a reward. Pay off. Work before play. Do that. If that gives you more energy to get through the to-do list, give yourself a reward at the end. Girl, you own your life, okay? Own it. Control it. Take care of it. You're in charge. You're the boss. You're the boss lady. You get to change the rules and choose how you do life all day long. I'm giving you permission to get back in the driver's seat. Make some executive decisions here on how things happen. Okay. So anything else that comes up? Are you not getting enough sleep? Are you on schedule overload? Where can you let go of some things in your list? I like to create a list of things I'd like to get done for the week. Because I know my Monday is going to be different than my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Things will pop up and there's going to be curveballs. But the like, I'd like to get these things done. Revamp homepage to website. Pick another email software, email marketing software, things like that. I'm just really reading off my own list. Keep working on my book in spare time. And then there's some little fun things that are for fun. Um, Go to the movies with the boyfriend, that kind of thing. So... Overall, make that list and give yourself some grace. It doesn't have to be done that day. It can be done within the week or whatever that looks like. Give yourself some grace when it comes to that schedule overload. We put too much on our plates per day. Maybe it should just be one or two items per day or one big thing and maybe three little tasks. Like emailing somebody back or mailing out something or dropping something off. An Amazon return. We all know what those are like. Take a look at that in your inventory. Now, if you can't sleep or you're not getting enough sleep, it could be many things. It could be, gosh, could be your hormones. Hey, there it is again. That was me. So I got my hormones regulated. I was up every hour on the hour with the hot flashes and mind racing and tearing off the bed covers and turn the fan on, all the things. So I highly recommend checking out your hormones if you haven't already, if that's you. Um, Maybe you have too much in your brain. Maybe it's the activities you're doing before bed that are giving you that racing brain syndrome. I can't turn off my mind. Well, did you just read something that was technical that had to do with work for the next day? Of course you can't sleep. You're already mentally trying to solve whatever email you just read. Or maybe it was a social media post that upset you. Let's be honest, we're all triggered by social media. It's easy to do. Maybe that's not the best place to look before you fall asleep. Because you can't control always what you see in your feed. It could be something that pops up that brings back a bad memory. You're like, oh, there's my ex having fun. (laughs) Just had to throw it out there. I have some exes on my page and I do wish them well. I don't have anybody. I wouldn't follow anybody or still be friends with anyone that makes me feel bad about myself. I know better. But um, maybe it's that, you know, or you saw, just saw all your girlfriends went somewhere fun and didn't invite you. Man, why did they invite me? Now your brain's thinking about it. Not a good environment for sleep. You're better off reading something super boring and dull. <laughs> it has nothing to do with work the next day. It has nothing to do with the blue screen that you're, you know, getting all that energy off of your phone. I like to read simple books. My favorite go-to every night is reading does help me fall asleep. But if I read a self-help book before I go to bed, then my brain's trying to solve things. I'm processing information that's helpful. But if I read a good crime thriller, I'm a psychological thriller girl. You should see the books I've accumulated in the last two years. I finally gave myself permission to read fiction again. Because I've always been a bookworm since I was a little girl, little eight, nine-year-old, checking out books at the library. There's something about a good fiction book. You're not trying to solve anything. You're just enjoying it. It's a good movie. But you're reading and you're laying down, and your eyes are half closed, so you're already relaxed and getting warm in your bed. That works for me. Find what works for you to turn your brain off so you can sleep better, because once once you get that good, solid, whatever hours you need, everyone's different. 
could be, I mean, I think the average for women is seven, eight to 10 is for men. Get that sleep because that's how you'll tackle the next day. You can't tackle life's problems when you're half awake. And I am the queen of grogginess, especially first thing in the morning. I'm like, don't come at me with anything big because you're not going to get the best version of me yet. Just not going to get it. So let's take a look again at schedule overload. Are you not asking for help for anything? I'm the queen of not asking for help. I got it. I'll do it. I'm a lone wolf. Everyone else in my life has let me down. So I just know how to, I'm just going to do this by myself. At least I know it's going to get done. It's going to get done right the first time. I have to ask for anyone to redo it. I can only count on me. I just described myself, all my wounds, all my hurt that I've worked on and looked at more closely in the past year to two years. Why am I like that? Why don't I trust people to help me? Because when they do, I am that girl that will ooze all over you. I'm so damn happy you helped me. I think sometimes waiters and waitresses are like, wow, <laughs> girl, I just brought, I just filled your cup with water. Why are you so excited and so thankful? Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm that girl. Cause I'm so used to not getting the help that when I do, you're my, my favorite person. You're a rock star. You're my hero. The person that shops for me, grocery shops for me and fills my trunk up with curbside groceries. I love that person. They're my favorite because I hate grocery shopping. <laughs> and it's so cool that someone is going to do this for me. Of course, they're getting paid. It's their job. But I like to tip them really good. So kind of take a look. Where am I not getting help? Because it's a lot easier to have some teamwork involved in a big project. Lighten the load. I love that part of, of what I'm doing now career-wise is I do get to be reintroduced to some teamwork, working with a team and getting stuff done together. Doesn't feel as heavy, isn't a drain. So those are some big chunks of what's draining you. Now let's kind of pull in what could be a faucet. What's going to fill me? Once I stop and plug the drain that Carrie told me about, whether it's stress, sugar, caffeine addiction, poor relationships, my environment is all neat and organized. That's all good. I got rid of that one friend that drags me down every five minutes. Every time I try to have a good day, they're right there trying to make me miserable. Misery loves company. Um, I'm getting my sleep, girl. I'm not overscheduled. I'm spanning out my to-do list over a week instead of a day. I'm not in perfection syndrome. You know, that's another one I just thought I would throw in there quick. Progress over perfection, ladies. Progress over perfection is my favorite term and reminder. If we're in perfection mode, we're going to just grind ourselves to death, trying to be this perfect person that can't exist. You're a human being. Love yourself. Give yourself some grace. So we're plugging these drains, right? Now, what can we do to add in the right energy? Where can I be? Where can I find some faucets? All right. So... What is your favorite activity of choice? Because you're going to get some in, some serotonin, some natural endorphins. You're going to get some happy energy when you do some type of activity. I am not the queen of go to the go to the gym seven days a week and lift everything you can find. That's just not me. Never will be. I don't think I think it's stressful on your body to overwork it. I like to look for a happiness because your actual the truth is when you overwork out and your body is not used to it. Your cortisol levels are going to go higher and you're not losing weight. You get in that zone of stress. Your body's in stress mode. It's not going to do anything. So I suggest activity of choice. Could be lots of sex, guys. Let's admit it. You know, that's a great calorie burner. If you're in a great relationship, do that and do lots of that. Um, maybe it's just going on a great hike. I love being in nature, going for a walk in a park, walking your dog somewhere new, different, Find a new path that's fun, different that you haven't done before. Walk through a neighborhood that's not even yours. Maybe there's a really fun neighborhood. I've got one of those. I have to drive to get to it, but dang, those houses are gorgeous and the path is pretty and it's just kind of a nice new environment. If I just always walk in my neighborhood, it gets boring, it gets old, there's no enthusiasm. So I can do that. I can change that up. Maybe try a new gym. If you're sick of your gym because you're kind of stuck in a rut and it's just not, not exciting, or maybe find a new trainer or someone that's going to introduce some different workouts 
into your pattern. Girl, go to YouTube. There's so many great workouts online. I do my weights at home with my yoga mat. I love it. And I change it up. If I get to kind of like see the same pattern with the same trainers for a while, I'll switch it. You know, I've used four or five different ones in the last six months. This is going to be a faucet. Okay. It's going to be a faucet. Find that activity of choice and do more of it. Maybe it's just walking on a treadmill, but how can I habit stack? Because this is what I do. Again, it goes back to, I've got to reward myself. But if I'm going to walk on the treadmill for 45 minutes, Miss Carrie's going to be watching some show she likes. It's American Idol right now is one of the things that I'm watching. could be anything. A good show, a good crime TV, 2020 dateline kind of thing. Because it does, it gets your mind into it. You don't even realize you're walking. Boy, do you feel good afterwards. Oh, you feel so good. Your brain's on fire. Your blood is pumping. Your heart is happy. Your body's like, yeah, that's what I was created for. You know, that energy and motion. Um, body emotion, sorry. Energy emotion is an emotion. Kind of look at that. Um, that's what you're for. That's what you're created for. That's what legs are for, arms, all the things. And an energy and a body that stays, you know, that body that's in motion stays in motion. It's just kind of gets easier and easier. It's that coming back after long times of not being in motion. That's hard. Uh, look at other endorphin type activities. Maybe it's going out, out out with friends or vacations or weekend getaways, redecorating a room, maybe a hobby. Maybe it's a special date night. That's going to give you that endorphin you're looking for and you want to feel pretty and romantic. You know, again, a girl's night out. Maybe it's to see your mom, your family, your sisters, whoever that is. Plan that weekend getaway. As soon as you plan it, you're already there mentally. You already feel the stress leave your body. And you're like, ooh, yes, what am I going to pack? I wonder what the weather will be like. Maybe we should do this. Maybe I'll ask around. See, the enthusiasm starts to come back for life. You've got to be more than just work and paying the bills, right? What else could be a faucet? How about self-love and pampering time? I have noticed that when I book a massage for myself and I'm a 90 minute girl, I cannot do anything less than 90 minutes, full body massage, deep tissue. I'm an all in girl. Give me the hot stones. Give me the aromatherapy. I love to pamper myself. As soon as I book it though, I instantly feel calmer and more relaxed. I'm like, all right, time out. Do I even need a massage? Am I sore somewhere? Is this going to be a waste of money? It's just something about it. It's a faucet. You're filling, fill yourself, fill yourself. See this image in your head of that faucet. If it's got to be a fountain, that's fine. If it's more prettier, filling your soul, filling your cup. Another thing that really, really, and again, I'm, I brought this up earlier because I was jumping ahead in my own notes. Emotions are energy in motion. Worry affects our nervous, nervous system and it makes our body acidic, which is a breeding ground for disease. So watch your brain, watch your thoughts. When you're in worry mode, switch it as fast as you can to gratitude. It'll shift it over super fast. And you're starting to worry about the next day. Like, I'm so grateful I have a job to worry about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, oh, I got to make the bed. Hey, great. Grateful I have a warm bed to sleep in every night. Oh, man, I got to gro go get groceries. Oh, I'm so grateful I have the money to go get groceries. And I'm even more grateful they have curbside now. <laughs> Girls, I was doing that way before COVID made it cool. Okay, just saying. I was a fan a long time ago. So again, faucet type activities, make those little sparks of happy, fun stuff on your calendar. Because if every day looks like a to-do list, who wants to do that? I would just say, screw it. Keep the covers over my head. I'm going to go do my to-do list. Oh, let's see. It's a long one. Good God. I didn't get to anything yesterday. So it looks like it's twice as long. Not, not chip, chipping anything away. That's why I suggest doing a week long, week to week. Every weekend, I write down a, a little list of things I'd love to do, get done off my plate. 
And then there's some that have to be done, like scheduled dermatologist appointment for daughter, must do daughter's taxes, that sort of thing. Those have crosses off of them, of course, now. So much fun to check things off our list, isn't it? And then there's the like twos. I'll get to them when I get to them. It's not a deadline. But chip away at it, chip away at it. You know, I'll look at it like, oh, I've got a half an hour of free time here. I could, what else can I knock out quick? Don't go into energy overload with these insane schedule. Start to take things off your plate. Fill them with date night instead. Fill them with maybe painting a room in your house. Fill them with, I'm going to try a new hobby and learn how to do pottery, scrapbook, redecorating, sewing a pillow or curtains. I know I'm so sounding so domesticated right now. Let me go out of that bubble for a minute. You can tell I say home from to stay home way too much. I'm such a homebody. Maybe it's learning a new cooking thing, going to a fun place, learning how to cook together. That can be a fun date night. Maybe it's wine and, you know, those we have it here is called Pinot and paint or something like that, where it's got your wine and your painting class in a group. That's a fun night out. Maybe you want to learn how to salsa dance or something fun. Been there, done that. That's a lot of fun. Maybe meet new people. What other endorphin activities you can have? Believe it or not, church is one for me where I can just sing to Jesus, praise and worship, fill my soul, get a message for the week or for the day because I like to fill my soul spiritually every day, not just on Sundays. Where can I get that good yummy stuff? Because that's going to lead me right to the most exciting faucet of them all is God energy. God energy is the highest form of energy that's out there. Make time for your spiritual path. You will thank me later. Everyone does. I've never met a friend, colleague, family member that I've poured myself into that they will, their life will be better with Jesus that has come back to me and said, you're wrong. It's worse. (laughs) It's never happened. Never. In my 49 years, it's been Oh, Carrie, I was missing out. Why did I not let the Holy Spirit God energy into my life? Life's going to be hard. But take a passenger with you that's a lot more fun and makes it a little easier. And that's God. Being a human's tough. He knows. He came down and did it for us. He came down into a human body. You know, he did it. He knows. He carried the cross for us. And literally as I'm recording this, even though it's going to be scheduled out, we're going, it's Good Friday, Good Friday evening, going into Easter weekend, not to date this too much to make, you know, but as I'm recording it, I'm thinking of that God energy and I'm so grateful. I'm hitting all my faucets right now. I'm doing something I love. I'm sharing my soul with you guys. It's Good Friday. I'm going into Easter weekend, which is one of my very favorite holidays, which is really a holy day. I'm going to do some self-love and pampering alone time. It's a night off. No one's in the house, but me. I get to just have carry time, maybe a bubble bath in store, maybe some good food. I'm going to make myself a salad. I'm going to watch some of my favorite shows. I'm going to dwell on Jesus. I like to watch Passion of the Christ around this time of year. It's one of my favorites. It's not easy to watch, but it reminds me of the sacrifice God made for me, for that Jesus made for me. And that God energy is the highest form of energy. Notice how you feel after a women's retreat. If you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't mean Christian in label only. I mean, you're a Christ follower. You're a disciple. Are you feel, how do you feel after church? Don't just feel like, okay, I can take on the world this week. I'm good. I'm filled up. Life is good. Jesus showed up. My heart is yummy. Listening to Christian music does it for me. Every time, pop it in the playlist. When I'm around the house or most of all driving is when my favorite time to do my own little praise and worship. <laughs> Kind of look like I'm having church in my car, my arms out, the moon roof, and I'm praising the Lord. Don't care who's watching me because it's just my God time. It's just me and Jesus. That is the ultimate faucet. The ultimate 
ultimate fulfillment. Nothing will fill you more. Nothing on this planet can fill the void in your heart, soul, or breathe life back into you like God can. Nothing. And I've tried them all. Never gone down the drug path, but I can promise you, we're born, we're born with that void to know our creator. And when you're restless, feeling empty, it's because that part, my friend, is still not full. That's the best soulful energy out there. I only tell you what's good for you. I only share what I've been through. I only can give you my own life experience, tell you where to avoid certain pitfalls in your life and where to add extra yummy, great things so you can live your best life. That's all I care about. I want you to live your best life. I want you to have the confidence to go after it. I hope you found a lot of value in this podcast so that you can embrace life with more enthusiasm when your career, your business, wherever it looks, your relationships. And if this podcast hit you just in the right spot and was just what you needed, share it with a friend. Click share on Spotify, iTunes, wherever. Send them a link. Send it over. This really touched me today. I think it will help you too. Share it, post it, whatever. Because other girls get to hear this too. Big hugs, big love. Take care. Hi there, friend. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and double check that you're subscribed or following. And if you've got a quick 30 seconds, it would mean the world to me if you could leave me a five-star review and share what you specifically liked about this episode. 